So I want to talk about a possible solution to four nagging little problems. One is that lawyers don't have enough work. People who have legal problems are not getting help. Law students are graduating without being prepared for reality. And law schools are becoming obsolete. So the first problem is that the profession is being squeezed, both by new players like legal process outsourcers and form preparation sites like LegalZoom, on the one hand, and by other lawyers who are being creative in service delivery models like virtual law firms. So the amount of paying work is shrinking for the average lawyer. <clears throat> we can fight back at this by accusing these players of unauthorized practice of law or of unethical behavior. But the better strategy is to emphasize the distinctive lawyering skills and to come up with a better price competitive model. So um, how do you deal with this situation? The third problem is, is the fact that there are many people who could really use legal help, but they're not getting it. It's not, not made available to them. In this country, we spend about one-tenth what a country like the United Kingdom spends on uh, legal services for the poor. And there are plenty of people who would happily pay something for reasonably priced legal services. Next problem, law students. They graduate from law school debt-ridden, anxious, uh, unprepared for reality. They haven't been exposed to modern methods of technology and service delivery. Most law schools simply don't treat those subjects systematically at all. So not surprisingly, the traditional legal education model itself is uh, in danger, possibly obsolete. There are many people who say that law schools are failing their students and that the value proposition of law school is very doubtful these days. So how do you solve these four problems? Uh, we think it's a system problem. When I say we, it's myself and Ron Stout who was presenting this with me at a conference soon. Non-competitive service leads to loss of business, unhappy lawyers, law schools that are endangered, graduating unprepared graduates who practice ineffectively and therefore deliver non-competitive service. You can't fix part. You have to fix the entire system somehow. So one place where people are thinking about this seriously is a future ed conference. The third one of these is happening at New York Law School on Friday. And Ron and I are going to make this presentation or proposal there. Our basic idea is radically increase the number of places in law schools where students engage in developing useful software applications as part of their education. We call it Apps for Justice. Students learn about code by learning to code. They create useful things, not experiments, not toys, things that actually make a difference in the world that help people. How many lawyers in the room had a course in law school where you learned how to write an application? Well, I see one. Is that Blair? I'm not sure who that is. One place where people who do this get together is the Subtech Conference. It happens every two years. But Ron and I are, are, are starting to think that even though this isn't really caught on yet, this may be the time. The Federal Legal Services Corporation has given out $36 million in technology initiative grants in the nonprofit sector, uh, spawning a lot of innovation. One of these happens right here in Chicago, at Chicago Kent College of Law. They have the Access to Justice project. And they've created an authoring environment that lets students build interactive tools for self-helpers to work through their legal problems online with avatars and other kinds of just-in-time learning features. A related project is Law Help Interactive. This is a project of uh, Pro Bono Net. And this is an online document assembly service that uh, is used now in about 40 states by legal aides and courts. It generates about a quarter of a million documents for free a year at this stage. And so what we're trying to do is, is to build on this existing infrastructure in the nonprofit sector by promoting apps for justice clinics, where students learn how to use tools like A to J and hot docs and related technologies to build these interactive applications um, put them online, have, have them available to real people for real purposes, and uh, to see if we can make this happen at as many law schools as possible. So the students engage in these application development tools to create useful artifacts. Along the way, they understand how software development works to some degree. They also learn about substance and procedure in given practice areas. They gain confidence in their own skills, and they start to understand the ethical and policy issues involved. Some related projects, uh, Geeks for Wonks at uh, New York Law School, and the Legal Genie Project out in Orange County, which is a collaboration between a legal aid program and a bar association that's going to receive the Jim Kane Award for Excellence in E-Lawyering here on uh, Tuesday. 
You don't need to be limited, by the way, to interactive interviews and document templates. You can create lessons, games, iPhone apps, other kinds of useful things, maybe even these choice boxes that I talked about last year, these interactive widgets for helping people make decisions. So it's, it's a broad swath of, of activities that we are hoping to, to uh, encourage. We think it, it offers a quadruple bottom line. Students not only learn skills and knowledge, but they, they get experience and credentials. Lawyers can be more prosperous and more satisfied with their work lives. Society has more justice. Law schools can resuscitate their value proposition by delivering on these kinds of goods for the rest of the world. There's a historical analogy, Klepper, back in 1969, funded by the Ford Foundation, promoted clinics in law schools. In that time, there was no, almost no clinics in law school. In 10 years, every law school had one. And nowadays, there are thousands of clinicians and millions of law student hours being used for service purposes every year. We want to catalyze a similar thing. So we want to get to the point where we have this virtuous cycle, where great service results in more consumption, happier lawyers, thriving law schools that produce system-savvy graduates who can engage in more systematized practices so as to be able to deliver the great service that produces more consumption, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you.